Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our December 26th Wednesday Word. Our theme is Fear, False Evidence Appearing Real. And our lesson, we are finishing up on God's God Calls Moses. And our lesson for today is God Sends a Helper. Our scripture for the year, our theme is found in Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your great blessings upon our lives. Lord, we thank you for helping us to hear and to learn how to walk and to be who you've called us to be. Now, Father, we ask that you would help us to step into the calling on our lives, Lord, be it to Whatever it is, Father, whether it's to take an office or just simply to follow the mandate to go and to be disciples. So, Father, it is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. And again, our scripture is about Moses and we're reading from Exodus 4, 10 through 16. And it reads, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him. Who gave human beings their mouths? Who made them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. He said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and, and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. Now, again, just summing up what we've been talking about all this month. Again, Moses, you know, I talked about in the second week, I believe how Moses was giving his list of complaints in terms of, of, of the things that he was looking at, what he was afraid of. And, and how he thought these things were going to keep him from doing the job. And so now we're dealing with the last two that I talked about, which was, you know, his complaint about his speaking and then simply not wanting to go. And so this brings me to the first point is continual complaining angers God. And we see that in verse 14, because this is the then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. When we become complainers, and stay in that place. It's one thing to be upset about something. It's one thing to, to look at something and think you can't do it. But when you stay in that spirit of complaining and complaining and complaining, we set ourselves up for really angering God because we then are stepping into the plate of disobedience. Because if God is telling you to do something, but you're giving him back talk and complaining, it's not a good place that you want to be. Think about it with your children. If you have kids, if you tell them to do something, but if they keep giving you lip and complain and complain and complain, that is not really what you do. You really simply are wanting them to do what you've told them to do. You want them to go and be obedient. And that's really what God is, is telling Moses. Go, go be obedient. Go do what I've told you to do and know that I will be with you. In verse 12, he says, now go, I'll help you. And so he's constantly confirming to Moses that he will be the help that he needs. And this brings to me the next point, which is God handles all our shortcomings. Because what God did, even though he was angry at what Moses is, because Moses continued complaining, he gave Moses some help. He was sending him someone that would help him overcome those things that were shortcoming for him. And in verse 15, he says that he'll speak to him and put his words in his mouth. He was going to be sending Aaron with him and Aaron was going to become Moses's mouthpiece. He was going to be the one doing the speaking, if you would. And then our next point is God's spirit is the one that speaks for God through us. We simply allow him access. And you see in verse 16, he said, he will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and if you were God to him. And, and this is what I want you to visualize. Moses felt that his speech wasn't good enough, that he just didn't have the ability. And so he was going, so God was going to send Aaron 
who was the Levite, the priest. He was going to send him to stand in that place and speak for him, to speak on behalf of God. And instantly what I thought about here is God sends us a helper. He sends the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. He sends the helper with us. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's our helper. And he is the one that speaks to us and speaks through us. So when I open my mouth, I, like Moses, don't feel adequate enough. I don't feel my speech is good enough that my tongue, if you will, will give the right words. He would may have been talking about stuttering, but I'm just saying in general, many of us may not feel like we have the right words to say. Do we have the right words to encourage someone? We may not have the right words to preach a sermon. We feel inadequate and unable in our ability. However, we have the assurance that God sends a helper with us. He sends the Holy Spirit with us so that you and I, when we stand to talk because of our relationship with God, when I stand to speak, it's not me speaking. It's God speaking through me. Same with you. When you get up to speak, it's not you speaking. It's God speaking through you. Of course, that's the connection that you have. If you've got that connection with God, then he will do that. And that then gives us the reassurance that we need that goes back to the starting of this month's lesson when we really were talking about Moses and his fear of God. And I want to tie all that back in. Again, you know, we can be afraid of being called into the presence of God and receiving those assignments that he had for our lives. And we can be afraid because we feel like we're not good enough, that we don't have the right ability, the right talents, whatever it is. You have your list of obstacles. You have your list of excuses and complaints. But I just want to remind us that if continual complaining angers God, we don't want to be so afraid of doing what God tells us to do, that we become complainers and not compliment. Remember, I talked about that earlier. We want our words to compliment and to be in agreement with what God says. If God says you're a preacher, then you say yes and amen and you go and preach. If God says you're a teacher, you say yes and amen and you go and you teach. If God has called you to shepherd as he called Moses, then you say yes and amen and you go and shepherd. You go. The, the mandate from God is always go. If we've been listening this month, he's been constantly telling Moses to go. One of the calling for us was to go and to make disciples. But then we also to go and to step into those places that God has called us to be in. So what's our life lesson? Our calling is not dependent on us. It all depends on God's work through us. I need to say that again. Our calling is not dependent on us. It's not in my ability, my education. It's not in how much I know. It's not in how I look. It's not in who I know. It's not in what church I go to. It's not in the people I know. It's nothing about me. It all depends on God's work through us. See, if God's spirit is not dwelling within you, if you did not accept that initial calling, which was to come into to a right relationship with, with God and salvation, if you didn't accept that call to live holy, if you didn't accept that call to allow the Holy Spirit to give you the gifts and then you work in those gifts and, and to function and live in that place, if you didn't accept those calling, then you can't go. You can't go because fear will keep you from stepping out and being all that God has called you to be. And this is this is the last Wednesday lesson for the year 2012. And my uh, hope for you is that you will really find true freedom, that God would allow you, that you would allow God rather to work in you in such a way that you will begin to, to seek a desire to do all that he's called you to do. That Psalm 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's my prayer. As you leave this year, that every fear you have, you will lay it at the cross of Christ. You will lay it at his feet and you will step into the new year released and set free from those things that have hindered you from being who God has called you to be. And I just, I need to say that again. I pray that you will be set free. I'm praying today, right now for freedom for God's people, freedom from drugs, freedom from things that hinder and keep you from being who he's called to be. I'm running out of time, but I just want to say this final note. God wants us to know it is not in our ability, but it is all in our relationship with him. God bless you.